You got to be a freak. The Big Lenny Podcast 6, Fast Twitch Fiber Freak. I think that's a first for you. And we enjoy your outstanding material. I can say that for a fact. It's an honor to have you as a Fast Twitch Fiber Freak, sir. Sean, again, you're the runner-up. Also a Fast Twitch Fiber Freak champion. First place finisher. Stop the tape. Go big or go home. Sean is here for this historic sixth episode of the Big Lenny Podcast. Big Harry from Michigan, keeping his blood sugar under control, while at the same time carrying a lot of muscle. It's good to see you, sir. And of course, the legendary road to a thousand pound bench press. What can he say? He's a fierce spiritual family man. High-ranking member of the Misfit Maniac Army. Brings a lot to the Big Lenny podcast. We're glad to have him. And of course, Mark Steen, the freak. Bowling Mike, Bro Teen, Jay. Go Bigger Go Home Productions. Definitely, if you were to have an average, you're definitely a perennial top 10 fast twitch fiber freak. Hello, Sean, and of course, the one and only barbecue sauce, a man of wisdom, a man of integrity, a man of knowledge, a man that makes this Big Lenny podcast what it is. Thanks for joining us tonight. And Road to a Thousand Pound Bench Press, I love you too. I appreciate that. And that's a great thing to tell anybody, including a man. There's no slang involved. There's no cookie cutter expectations involved. And it's what we should be doing and proud to be doing with our fellow man. Dylan Gallant, top of the evening to you, sir. I hope everyone had great workouts today. I hope that they're sore. And I hope that they're replenishing through rest, hydration, and great meals. Hello, Stephen Jacoby. And Barbecue Sauce says his congratulations to you. you got to be a freak. He provides mints on a superhuman level. Yes, Stephen. Evo from the Fatherland. A place I definitely plan on visiting soon. Germany. Justin. 11th place. You got to be a freak informs me this is the second time as the fast switch fiber freak. And I know you're right on that. Morley. Bowling Mike, I would expect you to be sore, but I would expect your natural hormone levels to be kicking in. And remember, the new studies are out. When you break down muscle fibers, there's certain elements that travel to your brain and replenish your brain in many ways that aren't possible any other type of way on earth. So there's a wonder when you did physical heavy work and you went through it and pushed your body to the limit, how tremendous that feeling was, how good that sleep was that night in a natural way, not a stimmed up way. All those stims and reasonable dosages and rare occasions are very helpful. Stephen Jacoby says, you got to be a freak in barbecue sauce and an actual single Big Lenny podcast. Yes, we are blessed this Tuesday evening. Johnny Sablatura. This was some anecdotal information for this podcast. Not so much in the way of research, but commonly known information that is getting obvious and needs to be addressed. Thank you for joining us, Johnny. 
Bowling Mike says there's no motivation needed. I agree. You want to get to that level where everything's automatic, where you're like a machine, where you get up, use the bathroom, go outside, pray, meditate, get some sun. Even if it's not sunny, get some overcast. You're still going to get vitamin D. Sip some water or sip a little water with apple cider vinegar. Or drink a New World Nutritionals liver cleanse. As well as some of the finest proteins on the market. New World Nutritionals. Tell them Big Lenny sent you also. Amino Asylum. The new Big Lenny sponsor. Tell them Lenny sent you. And it will blow your mind when some of you look at the products on the Amino Asylum website. There's some very effective muscle building products on there. Get on the Amino Asylum website. Tell them Big Lenny sent you as well. DelrayMisfitsGear.com. What can I say? The preferred uniform of the gym when you're going to war. When you're going to pick up your food. Pretty much anywhere. DelrayMisfitsGear.com. Look at the website. Tell them Big Lenny sent you. Hello, Big Daddy Z, DIY specialist. That's always a goal, 700 pounds ripped. Always set the goals at a top tier level. Set the goal to, to make yourself the most intelligent man in the world. The fastest, or the fast, or the most amount of fast twitch fibers, or the most massive, or the strongest, or the quickest. Or one that carries a lot of investments and capital so they're able to employ others so they can eat nutritious food and have a roof over their head. You're caring about other human beings when you do these things, not just yourself. And society will lie to you and call us selfish. Nothing could be further from the truth, maniacs. There's no selfishness here. We're all about one another. Herrick Gawkins, do I believe in PCT after a cycle? It depends, but for the most part, no, I don't. You're just delaying the inevitable. And in some cases, overuse of HCG can have a negative feedback for you. So you can tell when your estrogen is a little too high and you want to use something like exemestine, which is strong but isn't the strongest. And I don't recommend using anti-estrogens as part of a size gaining cycle at all. You use this during pre-contest and when you can look at yourself and feel it and say, <coughs> I'm a little too watery. I feel a little depressed or down. That shows that you're becoming emotional roller coaster and like, you know who got to take an anti-estrogen for a short period of time. Although Clomid and that new form of Clomid can work, when you stop that, you're, go back, you're going back to day one. So you can use them as a bridge. Don't think that you're going to kickstart your testosterone levels and you're good from there. No, because once you stop that, your body's going to need to take time to build up its testosterone levels naturally is that that's not going to keep kicking it in or for a long-term duration. I'm going to shout out Mike Hawk, Misfit Maniac, on this Big Lenny podcast, episode six. Yes, Johnny Sablatora. And with a group of maniacs, how we bounce off one another and put ideas forth. That's the key. Harry, I'm feeling fine. Uh, maybe a little bit water retention, but it's manageable, but I'll certainly know what to do when it gets out of hand. Training, of course, doing research, different projects, and I hope all is well up in Michigan, that's for sure. I texted Prince Andrew a few weeks ago. The last time I spoke to him was probably a while, 
and it may actually have been when we shot that video at powerhouse gym but like i said i text jay i text meow man and brad's on that text line as well but brad hasn't responded so maybe he's into hiding wrote to a thousand pound bench press wants me to tell us more about heather well she was an irish girl she wore glasses but she was cute and she had a bubble butt and she was thick and I don't think she liked me back, but I don't think she ever had a young boy tell her that he was in love with her like I did before. And I remember sneaking out of the house and trying to knock on her bedroom window at about two o'clock in the morning, which my father never caught on. I was able to walk back home and it was a pretty far walk as I lived in Oakmont. She lived in Verona, but once she got into high school, though, she was had a boyfriend that was one of the top Western Pennsylvania amateur wrestlers. So and he was older than her. So not much else to say. Road to a thousand pound bench press. Big Daddy Z says every time he grills ribeyes, Big Lenny is live. I think that's a Freudian slip. Got pigs that easy. Ribeyes are the best food on earth. The best. Just ask Jordan Peterson and his daughter, Michaela. Bowling Mike. I assume you just finished your back and leg day, which is intensity personified. And I haven't done back or legs on the same day, and if I can even remember. So... That's a good way to get that whole body growth going and working those huge amounts of muscle masses. And Big Daddy Z, I hope your eating is on point as well as your dehydration or your hydration. Remember, Manex, dehydration will make you fatter, softer, and lower your hormone levels as well as many other horrible effects for the body such as constipation, high blood pressure, difficulty sleeping, and what are the three things that the average cookie cutter American eats or drinks? Dehydrating coffee, dehydrating sodas, and dehydrating alcohol. And you can throw in the energy drinks as well. So most of America cookie cutters are dehydrated and protein deficient as they love their carbs. And that's a big problem with the health. You know, we can talk about seed oils all day and I removed them from my diet for the most part, but I'm sure I won't ingest it, but it's going to be very rare. That's for sure. Very rarely. Uh, but it comes down to dehydrating beverages and lack of protein. And there's still, a, you know, with the vegans and those that don't eat red meat, they're just withering away. Their muscles, their nerves, their bone structures, their brain, their ability to think. And I cannot fathom why people still do that. Stephen Jacoby says, Podcast 6, sponsored by New World Nutritionals, Stephen. New World Nutritionals, and tell the owner, Plato, P-L-A-T-O, that Big Lenny sent you. And I'm taking in a 90 gram dosage of their whey isolate, unflavored, mixed with two cups of oatmeal for a post-workout drink. And at the suggestion of the, that fat comedian, Joey Diaz, I'm actually not going to blend any fruit anymore. So if I get some smoothies, it's going to be the ones that I get at uh, Retro Fitness. But... I think you're better off just eating the fruit. Billy Bass for Prez says, how do I pay bills? Through a checking account, Billy. Greg Pettis says, Mike Webster, 500 pound bench press. Yes. And he did 350 for 15 when he's with the Steelers. The Steelers have had, and I'm going to name the 500 pound bench pressers that I know of. 
Mike Webster, John Kolb, Steve Corson, Larry Brown, Terry Long, Craig Wolfley, uh, and the, I believe Dermonte Dawson were legitimate 500 pound bench pressers. Now, any of the current Steelers or those within the last 20 years, none that I know of offhand, I'm sure it's possible, but highly improbable. A 500 pound bench is no joke, believe me. I remember in the 80s, people used to throw around, oh, my uncle does a 500 pound bench or my father does. And I remember the story of the actor, Terry Crews, I believe it was, telling people he had a 500 pound bench. So he was at a party at that actor, Jamie Foxx's house. And Jamie Foxx says, oh, I got a nice weight room downstairs in my mansion. So they all went downstairs and Terry Crews got buried with 500, so never take that lightly. Habba Dabba Do, good evening to you, sir. Stephen Jacoby, the best whey protein. Stephen, it's W H E Y, and that's New World Nutritionals. I can guarantee it. There you go, Stephen. I like that correction. What do I think about Jason's coin collection? Uh, not for me, but I'm sure if you are able to accumulate some rare coins, that it could be very worthwhile and interesting. I'll never forget at the podcast, one of the maniacs sent in a German coin during the Third Reich, and it had the swastika on it and everything, and that's a very rare coin because when Germany surrendered to the Allies... The Allies began a denazification program where they got rid of all the swastika banners and all the Nazi ideology in the books. And they went and did a, they did a book burning on that. And they took all their military secrets, of course, and actually the Mossad and the new country of Israel took a lot of their military tactics and secrets. So if Jason has that rare coin with a swastika on it, that's Got to be worth some money. Dylan Gallant says, coming to Toronto soon? Soon. Big Daddy, Dylan, and myself will definitely bring some intensity. You got that right. You got that right. Bowling Mike is having beet juice and steak. That's very, very interesting. I don't know how the beet juice how palatable it is, but I've never had it, but watch, be careful if there's a lot of artificial sweetenings and flavorings and sugar. Kim Glover says, if I say a bad word, I will donate 500 bucks. Yeah, I'll say a bad word. Cookie cutter doesn't get any worse than that. Or bad. Mick DePrick says, update on Brad's radiation poisoning. Brad isn't hiding. He won't text. He won't show his face on Instagram. He'll show his new power rack. And he'll show his book that Robert Frank gave him on. I don't know what, but and he'll show his dirty fingernails holding that book, but <coughs> maybe the radiation caused him not to be able to speak or type on a text, which we hope isn't the case. Habba Dabba Do is, is there such a thing as getting too much sun? Absolutely. There's such a thing as drinking too much water, eating too much steak? Absolutely. Is there such a thing as getting too much sleep? I don't think so, because at some point your body is not going to sleep. You can't just lay down and expect to sleep continuously because you're laying down. No, I don't think that ever happened. But if you feel the need to sleep and you're not, for instance, doing something you have to do, it's really important, such as earning money, training at the gym, eating or shopping for your food. Sleep. Go ahead and sleep. 
Don't even think twice. Dylan Gallant says, some spots in Toronto would put prime Dixie Highway to shame. It wouldn't surprise me. It wouldn't surprise me at all, Dylan. No update on Jason at all, Stephen. Mick DePrick says, I'm looking aboriginal today. Well, I'll take the original parts. And of course, I'm the Tom Platts of Ab, so that's a fitting name, Mick DePrick. The Stig says cookie cutter Lenny. Yeah, we're all cookie cutters to a point. The key is you want to identify it and eliminate those cookie cutter behaviors. But that is true. We're all cookie cutters and porn addicts. No doubt about it. Road to a thousand pound bench press wants to know why the liberals are obsessed with defunding the police. <coughs> because the liberals want to be able to buy and use substances 24 7 whenever they want the liberals want to be able to basically do whatever they want when they want and what's standing in the way is conservatives ten commandments and honorable upright people never forget that See, the liberals' mantra is, goes right along with Satanist Anton LaVey and Aleister Crowley. Do what thou wilt, which means they want to eat what they want when they want. Whatever type of dirty, filthy fantasy they have in their mind, they want to be able to do it, no matter who it's with, what their age is, or what it is. Number three, they want to be able to do any type of mind-altering substance when they want and have the government provide it for them as well as providing their basic housing and everything they want on a whim. And they always justify that, well, there's countries so rich. Well, under their beliefs and philosophy, that wouldn't last one generation. So... Now, you have an argument of a police state and many times no one really needed a police and they just caused a, an issue. And yeah, that's a problem, of course. This country has more people than any, any other country that are incarcerated. Something's not right about that. But allowing what's going on in this country now is the haunt consequences are horrific and you have to look at it as a, in a practical way you're welcome bowling mike do cookie cutters have pensions cookie cutters crave pensions billy bats for press there's nothing wrong with a pension absolutely not and of course if you get the opportunity to have one take it but I've seen so many instances, and I'm not mentioning any names, where a pension becomes their god. A pension is like the ultimate me, 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 selfishness. Carefree, not thinking or needing God. And that's why belief in God is down and especially among pensioners. And I can tell you the activities of most pensioners that justify, well, I have my pension now, I'm gonna just go out and gamble all the time, I'm gonna go on vacation. And when I worked at that swinger club, believe me, there was many pensioners there. And that is the issue with that. That is, that is the issue with the so-called good life. A lot of times God is forgotten and what becomes the God is the money, the money in the bank. And of course, in a different aspect, this phone, this connection becomes people's gods. 
Habba Dabba Doo says, thoughts on the Haitian cannibal gang headed to the United States? Well, they're here already. They've been here. And don't, don't ever think for a second that everyone from Haiti is like that because some of the nicest, caring, most Christian people, most loving people, common sense people, came from the island of Haiti and I've had relationships with them. Very sweet and beautiful people. However, when you have a police force that is corrupt because it's weak, everybody's on the take, then you have chaos. And therefore, the criminal element that's going to have the most members, the most guns, on par with, in most cases, exceeding Haiti's army or police force or private security forces. They're going to take over and run the show. And we've seen videos online of the cannibals. And there is a food shortage. There's always a food shortage down there. And you can... I remember when I came down here to Florida in 1990, the only Haitian I never knew, I ever known were two. It was bodybuilder, natural bodybuilder, John Paul Gilliam. And then there was the rest of the Haiti kid. It was a midget. And that's the only thing I knew about Haiti. And the, there's a movie called Serpent and the Rainbow, which I didn't see until after I moved down here. But it showed a lot of what happened in Haiti. I'd highly recommend it. The Serpent and the Rainbow, for those that don't have a high Haitian population where they live. But now, most of the time, in the most places in the United States and Canada, it certainly do have high Haitian populations, not just New York and Florida. Uh, the cannibalism thing is part, partly, yeah, people need protein, they need meat. And sad to say, I work with a Haitian guy that said they used to eat cats. That's a delicacy. And it, I'm sure they eat dogs too, but they said the cats tasted good. And he used to round up cats and put them in a big net and bang them on a tree and then cut them up and uh, sell them at market, which is a very disgusting thing to do. But, you know, what if you're... eat a food and eat a protein. But again, you look at those countries that have food shortages, they typically have the most babies. Does that make sense? It doesn't to me. It shows lack of willpower, that country cursed. Some say it is. They've made deals with the devil many, many times. Look at the history. They have been independent, actually the longest, uh, current independent black governed nation in the world, not only in just the Western Hemisphere. And they got their independence in 1804. And it was rumored that they made deals with the devil to drive the French out. And yes, they had pretty good fighters. They had some tough guys. There's no doubt about it. And some Haitians are very, very tough, like the women and men too. But then you have a bad element as well. Very criminal element. And a lot of that cannibalism is also used as a scare tactic or mind control. Similar in the way in the United States. And from what I understand, there's not as much rape in the prisons as there used to be. But that's basically a scare tactic, an intimidation tactic. And that scares the populace knowing when these Characters like barbecue sauce and many others are eating people. It strikes fear into people. And obviously, there are cases of cannibalism going on in every country of the world. There still are to this day. But, but typically, the African continent has been the leader in that. Although, don't forget, a couple hundred years before that, that went on everywhere. Spain, England, Russia, Germany. We're talking Middle Ages, yes. So, when we want to speak about the United States, you got to have law and order. you got to have a strong police force. And you have to have a strong force 
protecting yourself and your family. Always be on guard, always be on the lookout, as I say. Never trust anybody, ever. Watch your property around others in public. Carry a can of mace or bear repellent or something like that, or a whistle or anything. Criminals prey on the weak. And that's why they basically want to defund the police because the police are strong in most cases. And the police in Florida are very strong. Very strong police presence. And we ought to be thankful for that, at least here in Florida. Buzz McAllister says, what should he do if his motivation and team is starting to become noticeably diminished? Buzz, you gotta take a look at yourself. You gotta take a look at your routine. Why is the motivation diminished? Are you not making any gains? Do you, are you looking around at the gym and noticing what others are doing when they train? Or are you thinking, hey, I have one life to live. I'm gonna make myself the best I can. And I'm gonna do the research on how to do that. I'm gonna have a goal of what I wanna look like, how I wanna lift. And I'm gonna set to put up a routine that is gonna get me to this goal and nothing's gonna deviate from it as well as my meals. I'm gonna make that the most important thing. Why? When you make that the most important thing, all other areas of your life will improve. I can guarantee you that. And that's where high intensity training comes in. You might be doing too many useless exercises. And remember, everyone likes a dopamine release. That's why people drink. That's why they do drugs. That's why they look at porn. That's why they listen to music. But the best feeling you're going to get is when you do a heavy basic movement for reps, 10 reps to where you can't even move it anymore. The blood's flowing. Your neurotransmitters are at a premium. Your muscles are secreting compounds that go to your brain and restore it and improve it. And you're breaking down muscle fibers and that's gonna cause endorphins to be released. Go out and do a bit set of squats, 20 reps heavy. Go out and run 100 yard sprints run 100 yards, walk it back, run 100 yards, walk it back. Put a parachute on if you get one, run into the wind. Those are the kind of things that are gonna give you that incredible, incredible release buzz. And if your workouts are too easy, you're not gonna get that, you're gonna lose interest. So make your workouts terrifying. Make yourself dread your workout. Remember when you're doing legs, Keep the reps constant, continuous tension, but keep pumping one out. When you're on that leg press, keep pumping out the reps. One pump, pump one at a time, one at a time, one at a time, one at a time. And it may seem like some almost torture, but that's what you have to do. So keep your sets to a minimum, your intensity high, Buzz. You only have one life to live. Don't waste a second of it. And never underestimate the importance of your training and eating and sleeping on your entire life. Greg Pettis sums that up with you have to eat, get, eat big to get big. Absolutely, Sarah. Thoughts on Trump having to pay $500 million to, $500 million to appeal his case or get his assets seized, seized soon? <coughs> well, that was coming. The left will do everything they can. <coughs> so he doesn't become the next president. He will raise the money, or his lawyers will find a loophole in that. But I can guarantee you that's not the first attack on him. No, sir. There's gonna be more of different types. So keep your eyes peeled. Ryan Nan says, he just found out about Lenny and the Misfits like a month ago. God bless you all. Well, God bless you, Ryan Nan. And welcome to Misfit Mania. And keep watching the Big Lenny Show, Ryan, and the Big Lenny Lives. 
and soon you'll be a member of our Misfit Maniac Army. When will I fight Kalora on his podcast? I'm going to reach out to him. Good morning to you, Flex Gavana, from Down Under in Australia. Mystery Man says, son is love. Scrappy Hustler said he just joined the gym with his teenage son so he can get back into shape at 40 and introducing Iron to his 16-year-old son. I can't think of a greater thing you could do as a father, Scrappy Hustler. <clears throat> Very simple. You join a gym with your son and you play him this message from Big Lenny. Sir, you're 16 years old. Listen to your father. Listen to Big Lenny. Pick a basic movement for each body part. A shoulder press, a bench press, a barbell or a deadlift, a squat, a leg press, a calf raise, abdominal crunches, barbell curls, close grip benches, tricep extensions, upright rows, dips. <coughs> Pull muscles, push muscles Monday, <coughs> pull muscles Wednesday, and legs Friday. And for the first three months, stick to that and do one or two warm-up sets per movement. Then both of you put on a weight where you can barely get six, but once you get 10, add five pounds to the bar and do two sets of those. Increase your protein. Make sure you're eating meat and eggs on a daily basis, along with potatoes, rice, pasta, fruits and vegetables, milk if you can drink it, lactose-free milk if you can't. Try to get your eight hours sleep. Make sure you're drinking enough water and getting out in the sun or getting outside even if it's not sun. And slowly worry about increasing the weight by adding five pounds once you get to 10 reps. Heavy tension, break down the muscles and build it up. Follow that routine for three or four months. And I guarantee you, sir, you will be bigger and stronger than you've ever been at 40. And your son will make phenomenal gains as a 16 year old. So good thing you got him in there, him. scrappy hustler. <coughs> Soviet E says Mike Tyson versus Jake Paul. Who's winning? I have no opinion on it. It's not going to be a real fight. Morley's trying to get motivated again. Life is so busy and difficult these days. Morley, simplify your life. Are you doing things that you don't need to do? Are you doing things that other people want you to do that have no benefit to you? Worry about Morley first and your family. And, and set the guidelines, Morley. You're the man. You make the decisions. You set the tone. Make sure you have enough time to sleep, eat, train, get rid of the BS. Don't worry about expensive clothes, car payments, nonsense like that, vacations, trips, eating out. Once you get on the right track, your goals in life should be getting stronger, getting faster. Increasing your muscle mass, getting smarter, increasing your investments, and being more loving to people. And that'll be get you on the right track and motivated. For more well wishes from you, I would definitely go live with a Cuban. Lex Cavana will compete at the Ruby when he gets there. We'll be looking forward to that. Flex, and I hopefully I'll be on the stage with you. Jake Sellers, go ahead and walk the dogs. You can watch the rest of it another time. Thank you, sir. Bowling Mike, that's usually a spur to get you to bench over 300. Your training partner, friend, is benching it. But just remember, do the reps. Bowling Mike, I've trained with some of the best bench pressures in the world. They never maxed out. They did more ahead. Lemmy, 
Yes, sir. Amino Asylum. I can that tan. Enough said. I definitely thought about writing a book. Road to a thousand pound bench press. Yes, Johnny. New World Nutritionals. Liver cleanse is a must for everyone. At least. At least once a year. Bowling Mike, I would say Publix is one of the best supermarkets, supermarkets in America. It may be a little pricey, but the selection and cleanliness and quality is excellent at Publix. Mystical Stab Artist says, let's get some talking Lenny dolls. That's not a bad idea. I will definitely speak with DowryMisfitsGear.com. Yes, one more chance, 12. Everyone should say to take zinc, vitamin C, magnesium, copper, B-complex, fish oil, vitamin D3 in the morning. That's it. Hello, Gomer Pyle. Welcome to the Big Lenny Podcast, episode 6. The Stig says zinc will give you bigger loads. What were I taking during usual cycle, Hamad Usman? Well, back in the day, at my biggest, I would take about 1,000 milligrams of test maybe 50 to 100 milligrams Anadrol or about 50, 75 milligrams of Dianabol a day along with little Deca. <coughs> Barbecue sauce says, according to the conservative Cuban, there's a watermelon shortage at Publix. Doesn't surprise me. We all know where that's coming from. Thoughts on diamond push-ups for triceps? Push-ups are something you could use to shock the muscle, row to a thousand pound bench press. But again, you're looking at the lack of progressive resistance. So you can get stronger doing push-ups. You can put in some muscle, but you'll never get the same effect as doing weights. And the biggest, you want the biggest triceps? That's from working on your overhead presses, your bench presses, your inclines, your close grip best presses, and your dips. Then after that, some type of tricep extension where you're seated and you're extending your elbows behind your back or you're laying down doing a skull crusher. But those compound movements are what's going to build all that meat on the triceps for sure. But push-ups are a good warm up for the triceps as well. Do I date women? Whoa, whoa, whoa. I don't date women at all, Dean Draver. I I'll associate with a woman, have conversation with a woman. Maybe massage a woman, maybe kiss her, uh, maybe kiss her feet, but I won't have intercourse with anybody but my wife. This is now, and if I do have some sexual contact, it'll be oral on each other, and in that case, I don't mind hanging roast beef, just a little variety, but that woman, I'd have to call a whore. And she'd have to call me a similar term that she would call a man. She could call me a pig. So, Johnny, the last time I squatted was quite a while ago. It was about a month ago. I'm going to squat in a few days. Yes, magnesium. Be furious. I actually got some magnesium glycinate, the most highly absorbable kind. Uh, and I'm always magnesium deficient. Go figure. It must be my high blood sugar. <clears throat> Bruce Joslin, I've never left. Never left. KJ, how did Meow Man get so shredded? Well, I can say at that contest of Southern States, when he was his most shredded, he'd stuck to his diet. And there wasn't any cheat days. There wasn't any cheat meals either, which I find absurd. And there was some fat burners used, some ephedrine, some caffeine, little clenbuterol, little T3 thyroid, which is standard, and a little GH. But he used to do sprints up a hill on I-95 out in the heat. Yeah, and he got shredded. He got shredded. So 
he had a lot of muscle to begin with. And you're going to get shredded easier when you do that, when you have muscle all over your body. So you always divide off-season as size building and pre-contest as a slow shrinkage of your fat cells at the same time trying to maintain as much muscle as possible. And if you lose muscle, you actually look less shredded. So that's the key. You got to keep your muscles. Disgusting us as he knows Christina Broccolini's brother quite well. A few maniacs did reach out to me, said they did talk to Christina's brother before. I think she may have more than one. KJ says he's the Arizona wrestling state champ, 2009, absolute best sport in the world. Certainly one of the toughest, KJ, and I'm glad to have you as part of our Misfit Maniac Army, as well as on the Big Lenny Podcast, live Big Lenny Podcast, episode six. Bruce Joslin, yes, let's just say that the girls in the 80s, and they were called freaks. They were the girls that liked maybe the metal. They had the long blow dried hair, a ton of makeup, dressed like sluts, tight jeans or tights, long nails. And they used to smoke and, but they were nasty. And we had a huge stairwell in our high school to where there was a lot of space underneath those stairwells. And if you kept quiet, a lot of those freaks, especially the girls would cut class and sit back there and smoke. <coughs> and I think they would open up a door to let the smoke out. But a few times I'd join them and let's just say things got pretty kinky. So wouldn't probably go on today as there's so many tattletales in schools, securities, security officers, uh, sometimes police officers in some of these schools as well as cameras. So that's just something from the 80s that Hey, it was pretty fun at the time, but I should have been concentrating more on my football and studies. The Fury says when he hears the word huge muscle mass, he takes a large amount of L-glutamine. I haven't taken glutamine in a few years, the Furious, but I find it great when you go up to pee in the middle of the night, have some water in the bathroom, along with your powdered L-glutamine, and drink a teaspoon of that or a tablespoon, that's fine. And it'll put you to sleep nicely. I don't recommend glutamine with any type of food or even mixed in a protein, but use it that way. And it does have anti-catabolic effects, growth hormone releasing effects, and deep sleep effects. And they say that your gut uh, scavenges most of the glutamine, and that's a good thing. So... You got that right, D Furious. Scrappy Hustler LA Fitness started off as a trendy gym. It did have good equipment, but sadly, it's not maintained very well, particularly the ones that I go to. And it's just a matter of time before I drop the membership as Crunch Fitness and hopefully Retro Fitness will be close to me here in Lake Worth. And I found there equipment to be top-notch. Greg Pettis says, can his workforce make him take diversity training? Unfortunately, Greg, yes, when you're part of a company. But do like I say you do. Play the game, Greg. Play the game. Take it in. Put on an act. And it's almost it's actually fun. But act like you're interested. Don't rebel like that because it's going to hurt nobody but you. That's why you should never, ever confide in your coworkers unless you really, really trust them, what you think and feel about people. Because a lot of that times that information can and will get back to people you don't want to get to react to. So when you're an employee, play the game. When you're a student, play the game. Don't ruffle their feathers. It's not the place. It's not going to do you any good. And quite frankly, those type of people aren't even worth getting in, into it with. So take the diversity training, put on a show, 
and you can sit and come back to the Big Lenny podcast and you can tell us maniacs exactly what kind of ridiculous things they said. Plan of Fitness is clean and has good equipment, has a good price, but you have shortcomings there with the lighter dumbbells, uh, no real barbells there, it's too many machines. That's the problem. However, it's better than nothing, that's for sure. And if you have some access to free weights like I did on my patio, I was able to do both, like biking it across the street. So Plan of Fitness is okay, it's, it, and you can make it as best as you can, but to me, you need to have the regular free weights, power racks, things like that, heavier dumbbells, because it's all about consistent training. Yes, I enjoy the smell of a woman's feet. Dad Bod Rod says, Victor's watermelon is full of piss. <laughs> Barbecue sauce. Caleb Williams is probably something I should address now as a topic of this live, which I got to a little late. As you know, Kenny Pickett signed a commitment to Temple University, which is close to where he lived in New Jersey. And he ended up transferring to the University of Pittsburgh, and he had an okay career. However, as anybody can remember the Big Lenny Live about a year or two ago, two years ago, he opted out of Pitt's bowl game. He was a senior quarterback. They depended on him to win that game. He didn't play and lost. He opted out. I think it's going to hurt his draft status if he gets hurt or injured. And how wrong he was. That came back to haunt him. Did you ever hear of Tom Brady or Dan Marino uh, opting out of a bowl game? Unthinkable. Absolutely unthinkable. Absolutely unthinkable. Now, as those, and I was shocked as well. The Steelers, of course, had a good signing in Russell Wilson for a league minimum. Thank you, we the people. Jesus Christ is the only way. And you will be blessed, we the people, for proclaiming that on the Big Lenny podcast, episode six. You we can't say that enough. People need to hear that more and more and more. And I want to thank you for saying that, we the people. That's a real man for you. Full McDonough, my advice to a 22-year-old is don't waste any time. Set up your life. <coughs> and it has to revolve around sleeping, eating, and training. It has to involve around learning. Possibly at a higher institution, it has to be involved in investing early. You must invest you must sacrifice, you must not be a cookie cutter, and you must stay away from the vices and pornography. Women, strippers, whores, escorts, you name it. Junk food. Drugs, alcohol. Those will tear you down. As well as cookie cutter commercialism and wasting time going to concerts, video games, nightclubs. As a 22-year-old, if you're consistent in all those things that I said you should be in, and obviously you have to have a relationship with God and Jesus. If you're consistent, you will be incredible at 30. Trust me. Very few are able to do that. And network with the right people. Those people that are where you want to be. Those people that don't drink, smoke, get tattoos, waste time, waste money are always talking about ways to make money and invest. That's my advice to you. And don't miss workouts. <coughs> Fit God, my current diet is very simple. In the morning, I'll have about 10 eggs with cheese. Scrambled in butter, 
four slices of sourdough bread, a little bit of butter on it, Greek yogurt, and some fruit like oranges or bananas, and of course, lactose-free whole milk. Then after that, have another meal of probably some chicken, some rice, maybe some grapes, a little bit of lactose-free milk. Then I'll have a workout. After I'll have my new World Nutritional Shake, 90 grams of whey isolate, unflavored, mixed with two cups of oats and a blender. I'll drink that after the workout. And then I will have either one or two meals a day, depending if I trained or not. Similar to the first two, usually it's a ground beef patty, some jasmine rice, and of course, Lenny's super salad with oil and vinegar, walnuts, avocado, cottage cheese, and romaine lettuce. And of course, another few cups of lactose-free whole milk. And that's it for now. Kenny Pickett. So the Steelers signed Russell Wilson for the league minimum. And he was excited to get to work with Kenny Pickett. Russell Wilson's 35. He says he wants to play till 40. But there's a very good chance it can only be one year. And I'm sure he would do everything he can to help Kenny become the starter. However, Kenny Pickett refused it. I went to the Steelers general managers and he said he wants out of Pittsburgh. So we said, fine. And they got him a deal where they sent him to Philadelphia, which to me with the quarterback they have in Philadelphia, it's going to be much harder for him to be a starter there. And I don't understand why he did it. He's pouting, but it goes to show what's going on with college football as well as what Kenny did when he was at Pitt and, and when he signed with the Temple Owls. It's the, uh, the transfer portal wimps, babies, call them what you will. Spoiled athletes, and it's bad enough they're getting paid, and yes, I think it is bad. You never want to give college-age athletes that kind of money. They're getting enough money in that scholarship or at least, if you want to give them money, set up a trust fund for them. Because we know what's going to happen with those college left salaries. It's going to be party time, escort time, stripper time, booze time, and drug time. Good. And you can see why Nick Saban retired. A great football mind like that, a molder of men that not only was concerned about making the best football player on the field, but the best human being they could be as well as for what they're life's goal and purpose was. And that's a move that Kenny Pickett did. He's going to be haunted by it. And there's a very good chance he may never get off the bench in Philadelphia. And he will regret doing what he did. And I'm coming from a standpoint of somebody who didn't play my senior year. And I understand Jay Masters is the same thing. But what we did, we didn't quit during the season. No. We just didn't play the next year for whatever stupid reason. We both regret it. However, we never tried to set up ourselves in a good situation to make it easier for us on a football field. I can guarantee you that. Because number one, I never missed a practice in three-a-day summer camp when it was rough. Even when I was a freshman, a sophomore, I went up against bigger juniors and seniors than me with experience and did quite well for myself. And Jay did as well. So that's very, very different. Although what we do is wrong and it haunts us to this day. But to want to set yourself up in that type of situation is absolutely childish. And maniacs, those of you that are into athletics, compete for that position. He didn't want to compete with Russell Wilson, so he threw a pout move. The Phillies quarterback is not going to be the one to, he's going to be able to beat out with that attitude, regardless. Because I don't think Kenny has a talent. So he's going to take that losing attitude and we'll see what he does. But that's just not no way to live, Maniacs. Embrace the competition. Embrace the process. It's not all about the money. My God, I know so many multimillionaires that are miserable, miserable, miserable people down here. That's not what life's all about. 
And let's get back some self-discipline, disciplining our children, discipline the way I was disciplined. You're the kid Brad smokes and Dyka type weed. It completely disassociates him from the world and puts him comb on his favorite chip. That might have something to do with it. And I don't care what anybody says, maniac. Stay away from that cookie cutter weed. OG Ghost is calling out this shitty system as well. Thoughts of taking M1T, Sicilian, never took it, but I know guys have made incredible gains doing that. The Furious did the handy, heavy standing military presses for reps. Great basic movement. Great basic movement, sir. No updates on the boozers. No updates on the boozers. Lemmy Moorhead says, yes, I would call the freak girls the lead of Ford looking women. And boy, as a teenager, that was a real treat. I tell you what, some of the greatest feelings I had was hanging around those whores. The Furious has a new mantra for his training. Blood, sweat, shit, piss, and tears. That's when you're really intense. The Furious also says, ride or die. It's a gunslinger's attitude. It's all or nothing. It is what it is. If you want to be successful in something, The Furious is 100% spot on. Ride or die. Whether you want to be an athlete, bodybuilder, businessman it's ride or die you're gonna have to take the risks you're gonna have to make the sacrifices and i appreciate that the furious it's called ride or die ride or die good night healy thank you for joining this big lenny podcast episode six and maniacs thank you for everything you've done all your contributions monetarily as well as intellectually Genova probably is over 200 pounds these days but I think he carries it pretty well thank you thick bandicoot 81 don't be a transfer portal baby maniacs don't be a wimp accept the challenge go through the challenge then you'll find out what life is all about thank you very much get a good meal in Wind it down. Don't look at any more screens. You can listen to them. Say a prayer. Listen to a documentary. Relax and get that REM sleep. Good night, maniacs.